Okay, I just need something that will work. Something with a switch on it to turn on my time machine. Okay, so it's March 8th today and we need to go back to November 26th. Perfect. Okay, now, whoops. Now, there we go. Let me pop you off of there. I can't wait to show you guys this project from start to finish. Because man, ugh. guys, this project is a long time coming. This room here, as you might be able to tell from looking behind me, used to be the room that I used as my temporary art studio. Besides the art studio, this also used to be the room that I had cluttered with shipping materials. It's still that room, but it's a lot cleaner now. So, it's about time that we make this room what we intended it to be when we bought this house two years ago. We've lived in this house for about one year, and finally, this is gonna be something. This is going to be our office. So, I think it's pretty good. We're gonna move some furniture. I'm just kidding. Uh, this room is freaking hideous. We got this cheese board on the ceiling. We got this panel board on the wall, which is why I deemed it okay to splatter it with paint when it was my temporary studio. It has this weird, uh, what you call it, uh, thermometer light switch. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, Hank comes in here because it's the only carpet in the house, and uh, it doesn't have any what you would call um, beauty. Uh, ugh. So first thing we're gonna do is. place here took a couple loads out to the dump basically all the garbage that came from the ceiling and the walls is basically gone now we're just about ready to start drywalling luckily behind the paneling over here we have drywall that we don't have to rehang so that will stay there but we have to hang drywall everywhere else in here except First, we gotta put up some poly. And the reason why we have to put up some poly is because we obviously ripped some off here. And the reason why we ripped some off here is because we had new electric put in and the electric that we already had updated. I don't mess around with electric, so we actually had my brother-in-law come in to do all of that for us. And it's not the physical part of the job that I couldn't do. I can run wire all day long. It's the theory behind electric. I don't want to burn down my house. So if I put too many plugs in series or something and I don't have the right amperage breaker in the breaker box, that could be bad. I don't even know what amps are or volts or whatever the other electric thing is. There's probably a bunch of stuff that I don't know. I don't mess with things I don't have a ticket for or that you need a ticket for too much. All the physical part, 
easy. Plumbing, I don't do that either because slope and flow and diameters and all that stuff, I just haven't learned what's proper to use. Same with wiring. I don't know what wire to use, so I just don't do it. So thank you to Joel for that. What I do do is a lot of the unticketed type construction, such as hanging drywall, which is the next step. And luckily I have some leftover board from some jobs I've been doing here uh, whilst doing this room as well. So I have four leftover boards from two different jobs. And since they were just gonna get trashed, I may as well use them in here. Drywall is a pretty simple learn as you go type of job, which is why I started doing it when I decided to start my own business. Electric and plumbing, you gotta go to school for that. And uh, I don't like school. But who does? School sucks. Um, but it is important to learn. Like in drywall, you learn that uh, almost always you do the ceiling first. But in our case, we're going to be skipping the ceiling and going straight to walls. Because at some point, we're going to get in-floor heating. Who knows when that'll be? And since our in-floor heating is going to be hugging the underside of the subfloor, we will need access to that. And if we cover it up now, we will just have to rip down the ceiling. I like a drywall ceiling. I don't like T-bar or anything like that. I think that looks terrible, mostly, almost all the time, every time. It looks bad every time. I don't like it. So we're not going to waste our time putting up something that we're just going to have to tear down. So in the meantime, we're just going to do the walls. And then when we do the in-floor healing, in-floor healing, what the heck is in-floor healing? Okay, so I have this hole in my floor up here that's is covered by this piece of laminate. In floor healing. <laughs> Dumb. Also got this cold air return here. <laughs> there's, a, there's another example of in floor healing. And over here, we, <laughs> we have another example. When we do the in floor heating, we will worry about the ceiling then, whatever it happens to be, probably drywall. It will be a pain because probably these walls are not plumb level and square and all that. So putting up the ceiling becomes a bit of a pain at that point, which is why you do the ceiling first. Uh, but we'll have to deal with it then. All right, enough talking. Let's get back to work. Hey Ash, give me a hand and press play. Said we don't always get what we deserve And way down we go
not a friendly endeavor. But we're done. Finally. Uh, took all day because I had to go to the store to get framing materials because this closet here was definitely not symmetrical with the room. So we actually shrunk it down a little bit to accommodate the doors that we would like to get in, in the future. Made it centered with the room. And speaking of doors, we also moved the entrance to the room uh, over a little bit and made the door wider because the door was pretty small and I think it would uh, create issues with getting furniture and stuff into the room through the small uh, hallway there. So we've made a little bit of a bigger door there and uh, I think uh, I think that will that'll work well. It'll, it's also going to be a, a barn door because uh, if we ever put a bulkhead here again we won't be able to open the door in and I don't want it to open out into the hallway which is what uh, was there originally when we bought the house. It just doesn't make sense to have doors open up into small hallways. I, I hate that. It's actually what we have over here in this bedroom. It opens out and then if someone's coming out of the bathroom here, you gotta close this door. It's stupid, it should open into the bedroom. I don't know. So all in all, not a bad uh, drywall job. We had very little scrap, which is good. The biggest piece of scrap is actually this piece here and then that piece there. We did have to go to the store to get more drywall as well because the only uh, leftovers from client work that I had were the 412s. But we've made good use of everything. And uh, I guess next it's on to taping, but that'll be another day. Oh yeah, good boy. Okay, back to work. Oh, don't drop them. So, as you can probably tell, ah, ha, ha. low ceiling warning, please. As you can probably tell by my bagpipes here, whoa, today is day one of taping. I have taken a little bit of a break from this room as I've been doing other client work and such, but now that I'm back, we can start on, this is funny, it's namesake. Wow, look at that shadow. Wait, how do you do a dog? Hold on. <laughs> That's not... Isn't this how you do a dog? Look at my hand, but look at the shadow. That's way off. That is... <laughs> that, <laughs> that is not a dog at all. Okay, I don't know how to do a dog. Let me... <laughs> okay, let's turn that off. Come on. There we go. I really need to clean up in here, actually. Let me take all the stuff out. Well, let me explain first what we're doing. Today is day one of taping, and I was gonna say it's namesake taping is what we are going to do today. On the seams, we're literally gonna put tape. But first, I'm gonna clean up. The train just passed, waiting this long ass line. After uh, cleaning up, I took everything to the dump, did all my other errands around the city, went back home, realized I had no tape, so now I'm coming back to town and uh, waiting in this long line for this train. And I look over, summer's drilling and yoga and meditation. Makes sense that those two things would be in the same building. <laughs> and why would it be in the closest hardware store to me? Crap, crap, crap. We need paper tape. Okay, I'm back. Had to go to two stores, but eventually we got what we were looking for. Seems like this job is continually trying to be postponed. Or I don't know if the job is postponing or I'm postponing. Even yesterday, after I was done at Alex's, I was gonna work on this project, but then I lost track of time. But we're back. Oh, hey, look at that. It works. Okay, I think my problem before, okay, sorry, this is a tangent. Before, yeah, I think the light was like coming down too low, so that's why it made it look like my dog had a horn. Imagine Hank just had like a horn sticking out of his head. That would be a creepy dog. 
That's kind of a dog. I can't really do shadow pups that much that well, but I knew I knew how to do a dog. Okay, anyway, back to the, what we're actually here for. Step one is doing some taping here. So first we put on a little bit of mud. We put on a little bit of tape. And this is why they call it taping. Although you will also hear it called mudding and taping. Next, I didn't bring my pan. Of course I didn't bring my pan. But next, we wiped it off. And then you, oh come on. <laughs> that is why you want to have a pan so you can wipe off your knife when you need to. It's a good thing I have this plastic down, although the carpet doesn't matter. But usually when I do these types of jobs, when I'm taping, I never cut off the excess plastic until I'm done. Just so that I have like a little uh, drip security. Just makes things a little bit easier for cleaning. Now typically when I'm taping an actual job, I don't do one at a time. I usually mud all the flats at once then tape all the flats and then wipe all the flats and then I move on to the butts and then I move on to the corners. And we do it in that order because the tools for doing the corners are different than the ones you do for the flats. So you have a corner applicator, put on the mud, the tape goes on just like it would on a flat, as in by hand. Then you use a roller, although this step is optional. Then you take your flusher, and there's different sizes of these. I always just use this three and a half inch, and then over top, I would use a four inch, except for it was stolen by one of my old employees. You basically take this, and you want to make sure that when you go over your flat tapes that you don't accidentally rip them off. So you gotta ease off as you get to them, then go through it again, and then wipe. Because you don't want to have slugs when it comes time to sanding, because it's easier to sand nice and smooth work. Then after this, you gotta do all of the bloody screws. All right, you get the idea. Screws suck. While I'm doing the screws up here, I'm also closing up the factory edge bevel, because that will show through the paint and it won't look finished. Not sure what we're gonna do for a ceiling, so may as well do that now, just in case we do nothing with the ceiling. Okay, I'm also gonna flat tape this here. I want to have a nice straight edge on that piece of tape. I'm going to flat tape this here so that that looks a little bit cleaner and then I'm also going to do it on the underside as well. And that's just personal preference. Because like I don't have any drywall that goes above it so it's not like it's going to be perfectly clean but It'll look a little better than having a janky line there. There we go. There we go. You get the point. So after I've done this, we let it dry, and then tomorrow is step two, which is first coat. You basically wait till the Mud is dry, the tapes are dry. You put on the coat on these flat tapes, it's relatively small, but on everything else, it's a little bit bigger. And 
You can either do it by hand or you can do it with the machine. I have the machines, the boxes, but since this is such a small job, there's no sense on muddying up a whole bunch of tools that you'll have to clean up. So all these are done by hand. Then I also got to do my bevels again for the second coat. And then of course, what I hate doing the most, even though it's the easiest, is the screws. And then after I'm done with these, I wait for it to dry again, and then it's on to the next step, step three, which is basically a repeat of step two. Basically, you just want to recoat everything. First, you may want to do a light sand, depending on how smooth you made uh, your last pass. You don't want any uh, bumps and stuff in there kind of hindering a smooth finished product. Basically, the whole goal throughout the mudding process is to make it as, wow, look at my hair. <laughs> I look like a freaking who from the, from the Grinch. I look like that freaking dad. <laughs> I need a haircut. Anyway, you want to make sure that the finished sand is as easy as possible because that's the most frustrating part, apart from the annoying screws. So you want to do all of the flats and you want to do all of the butts. And at this stage, I do both at the same time because they should all be smooth enough to be able to feather them out together. And then after you're done, all of the flats and all of the butts, if your inner corners are dry, you can do those as well. I do those three times, and sometimes you can do those at step two and at step three, so you don't have to do them at the same time that you do your skim coat, which is step four. It's a little confusing. But basically, as soon as they're dry, you want to do them again, especially if you're going to do them three times because they take forever to dry because there's a lot of mud in there, depending on how well they can be flushed out. And that depends on how uh, square they are. So now day four, step four, uh, we have to do our corners again, because I do them three times and that's just so that they look good. And I don't have to do any touch-ups uh, after sanding, or very minimal anyway. So, put on the mud, put on your biggest flusher. Mine is this one because my biggest one was stolen, but that's okay. Flush them out. And normally I would be doing all of them all around the entire room, not just two at a time. After you flush them out, you want to get rid of your ridges if there are any, and that'll depend on how thin your mud is. And that'll just make sanding easier. Clean up your bottoms, clean up your tops on all of them. Again, if there's ridges, you want to get rid of those. Clean up your bottom. Oh, I can't reach that. Clean up your top. Having nice tops and bottoms make it so your your finished work on the bottom, your trim and uh, baseboards and stuff, will fit on nicely. At the top, it'll make it so you have nice crisp three ways. In our case, we don't have three ways because there there's no ceiling. After you would complete all of that, because those take the longest to dry, you want to do them first. Move on to what else needs to be skimmed out. In this case, it's our butts. Give all the, if there are any, any ridges of sand. Normally you would use a full sander for this, but I left mine on the job site uh, that I'm currently working on uh, intermediately, intermediarily, in between other things. There you go. Um, once that's all good, load your pan up with some with some mud and this can be really thin at this point take your widest knife and skim out your butt 
Now, if you got junk like this in there, you want to take that out right away because it's bad for the sanding process. Well, it's bad for all the processes. You want to keep your mud as clean as possible, but sometimes it's a little difficult. This mud is actually left over from another project, so it's moved around a bit, so it's a little dirty, but as much as you can help it, you don't want to get stuff in there. Now, for me, when it comes to the skim process, I just cover the whole thing plus a little bit more uh, with a thin layer of mud. Get all that junk out of there. Wow, there's a lot of junk in here. And then wipe it pretty tight. Then, of course, after you're done all of your skim outs, including stuff like this, this uh, plug was too far down to begin with, and uh, so I cut out the hole and then I had to cut it out again because I didn't realize that it was at a different height than all the rest of them. That's because that was an original plug uh, that we just didn't notice was uh, at the wrong height. I'm not sure why it was put there, but it was. Um, but anyway, after you uh, skim everything out, you might want to take this as your time to do the last coat on all of all of the screws. You want to have three coats on your screws so that you don't get any screw pops or any screws showing through, any holes or any dips or anything like that, because that's really annoying. And then you don't have to worry about screws anymore. Some people will do this with their last pass of screws. They'll uh, do a stripe all the way through. Or some people do that from the very beginning. I like to do it at, on my last pass, so that way I know uh, which have been completed and which still need another coat. But anyway, now day five, we just wait. If, I, if this wasn't my house, I wouldn't be here right now uh, because I would assume things are still wet which you can see some discoloration in there. I should have wiped these ridges. I didn't, so that'll take a little more sanding. But that's okay. But it's not dry, so it's a good thing I didn't come into work today. <laughs> so tomorrow, day six. Which brings us to step six. Now, oftentimes you can get to step six a lot quicker, but that's usually on bigger projects where things have time to dry while you're still on the job site. In our case, it was really small. Things needed to dry, didn't dry. I did other things, now I'm back here on day six. But anyway, the last step is sanding. And I hate, hate sanding. <laughs> because it sucks. It sucks a lot. It, wow. Look at all that dust. Yeah, you're gonna wanna wear a respirator when you're doing this because all of that dust is going to get in your lungs and having a smooth wall is not worth having COPD. Um, but anyway, before I put on my respirator and get to this, let me kind of show you what I'm doing. Now, if you forget, like I did, to wipe your ridges, you're going to have a little more to do, but basically what you want to do is start with a pole sander if you have one. If you don't, you can also do this with a sponge. Wipe off your ridges. All your flaps and butts are going to have little ridges. You can sand all those off. And you do this part by eye. You do basically all of those, all of those around your whole project. You can also do all of your screws. And then after you're done doing everything around your whole entire project, you want to take your 200 to 300, this happens to be a 300 watt light bulb, and a sanding sponge, and then go over everything once again. What the light does is help bring out all of the flaws so you can see them better. What the sanding sponge does is get rid of all those flaws. So I go side to side first, get rid of everything I can kind of see, but this leaves long scratches. So what you want to do is go over it again very lightly but in a circular motion. And this will get rid of all of those scratches. 
You kind of do this all at once. So it looks a little more like this. Get off all your ridges. You do everything kind of more or less in one motion. Here, I'm gonna show you this. Uh, I didn't get that with the rough sander, so I'm just gonna do it with this sponge. Back and forth, circular motion, every motion that you kind of need. Get rid of all the ridges, move the light where you need it to go to search out all of the flaws. The goal is basically to have no flaws so that you have a nice smooth finish in your paint job. There we go. Something like that. Okay, now basically just do that in your whole project and you will be basically done. I hope how I sanded it out and showed you guys kind of demonstrates properly how, how to sand. That's basically more or less how it works from rough to smooth. From there you can move on to prime if you have no touch-ups to do. In our case, we have two touch-ups. Now how we remember where we have our touch-ups is we draw a circle and number our touch-ups from one to however many. And then at the door, before we leave, we wanna say whatever the amount are. In our case, we have two. So number one is this one right here. I didn't realize this flaw was there, so I've mudded it and I've numbered it. The reason why I numbered it is because it obviously turned white and uh, I might forget where it is. Now let's move on to number two, which is still a little wet as you can see, but once that dries, it's gonna blend in perfectly with the rest of it. So what happened here is I sanded a little bit too far down. You wanna really feather out the edges of your uh, flats and butts and when you do so sometimes you sand a little bit too deep and you expose the tape so as I was trying to blend this into the rest of the wall so it would have a nice transition some of the tape peeked through that usually doesn't happen because it sits in a bevel on the flats it'll more so happen on the butts because there is no factory bevel but in my case I just screwed up so marked it I have to do a little touch up and then I'm ready to prime <laughs> This is a full five gallon pail left over from the demo and rebuild we did upstairs when we first started doing renovations in this house. I forgot that we had it. I found it in the other basement bedroom here, uh, which will be a project that we'll do in another vlog. But anyway, it's kind of awesome that it's completely full. This is gonna be more than enough to do this whole room here. I don't like painting, but Johnny B is really busy right now. So I borrowed a paint sprayer from one of my other friends. We'll see how it goes. Okay, 
Okay. Everything is primed. Hopefully I did an okay job. <laughs> Just gonna back roll this last wall here. No longer blue. You may have wondered why it was blue and everything else is just regular color. It's because it was leftover. That's actually a, what they call an M2 or aqua board. Uh, and it's for bathrooms, for mildew resistance and whatnot. It makes no difference in this room, of course. It's typically something you would use in the bathroom or other places where there's a lot of steam. So even in the kitchen on the ceiling, you might use that. But since it was just extra that I had, may as well use it so it doesn't have to go out into the trash. Okay, now, since this is all uh, how I prime it, it's how I learned back when I was doing apartment buildings, I was taping. I wasn't, I wasn't painting, but the painters, they would spray all the mud and then spray everything together wait and then spray everything again so that's what i've done i have about i don't know i used about two-thirds of the pails so that's a pretty decent amount uh probably if you're a painter you know what i did wrong but i'm pretty happy with this i think <laughs> next we'll be painting We've decided to use up some of the leftover paint that we had from other projects. So the white here on the walls and on the ceiling are the same color that we have upstairs. And then the green around and inside the closet is leftovers from the same green that I had gotten Johnny B to paint in my art studio here on this wall. <laughs> Obviously this wall. Um, but since Johnny B was busy, he couldn't come paint my office here, so I had to do it. Uh, basically how I started was a little prep with some pole sanding the primer. The overspray of the primer being sprayed on creates these little dust particles that stick to the walls, and I wanted to get rid of as much of that as possible. Then after that, I sprayed again the paint color onto the ceiling. Doing a ceiling like this is a real pain in the ass to do without a sprayer, so I wanted to make it as easy as possible because I'm not a very good painter to begin with. After that, I back rolled everything and then started on the green. The green I did not spray on because I didn't want to get a bunch of gray mist all over the place, but I did the closet and outside of the closet. And now, here we are. I think we're about ready to put in the floor. Okay, replace the carpet with some leftover underlay. And let me tell you, this is a lot lighter than that carpet was. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. Okay, I gotta sweep this now. I found 16 cents and a key to add to my collection. Nice. And soon I'm gonna have to find a bigger receptacle to put all the keys. Okay, now the flooring I'm using for this project is actually some stuff that I'm gonna be reclaiming. It's the stuff that used to be in the house. I mean, technically it's still in the house, but uh, we have it down here in the basement. So this is what used to be upstairs. But we took it all out because we took out several walls and we didn't want it to look weird. The only piece that we kept up here was uh, this. Remember that heel joke I made like a month and a half ago in real time? Well, we're gonna be using this because it's free and uh, we are trying to do this on a budget. So, this is what it looks like.
And there we go, our old new floor all in. So we got in our vapor barrier and then our underlay and then this MDF. So vapor barrier, cause it's concrete, don't want moisture to come up and destroy the uh, MDF here. And then we got, of course, our underlay so that it floats nicely or relatively nicely. This is not what I would normally use. It's not the best stuff, but it was free. <laughs> this floor is meant to be temporary until we can get a nice wood floor, but it actually works pretty decent for in here. Now, an MDF sort of laminate flooring is not great for a basement, but I'm not too worried about it. It looks just decent until we can get a wood floor. We would like this room to be functional sooner rather than later. I dig it. All right, so now that we're at this point, we may as well go to one of these places here and pick up some trim. Let's see what they got here. Looks like they only have MDFs right now. too short well that sucks I already wasn't super happy because they only have MDF there's no wood left in Alberta for baseboards but I figured this would have to do and I purposely bought the longest ones they had hoping that they would be long enough for the walls that I have but obviously it's about six inches shy ah so what I could do is I could do a butt joint or like a scarf joint or something like that, but uh, we're gonna be able to see that joint there. I don't mind seeing joints like this because obviously there's a transition change, but here it's supposed to be linear and uh, I don't have the skill set to make those types of joints invisible without a bunch of time. And if I'm gonna spend that type of time on something like this, I may as well do something a little more my style. I have an idea. So I have a few lengths left of that trim, which will help with my idea. But I also need something else, something, maybe some of this, or maybe some of this. I'll figure it out.
Yeah, I like that. I'm glad that I did that instead of just doing a butt joint or a scarf joint or whatever type of joint. Um, yellow door is because Ashley thought yellow would be cute. Uh, she wasn't sure though, and since she is at home, couldn't confirm. So we may change the color of the door. I'm not. I'm not sure. As it says, it's under construction. I actually have plans to do uh, a bunch of stuff with that, but we'll focus on that in another vlog. I think all I need to do to finish the outside of everything here is to fill the nail holes and caulk all our joints and whatnot, and we'll be done. But I think first we'll do this window. Oh no, it's snowing. Okay, I'm back. I just had to figure something outside because it started snowing, but then it stopped snowing, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but got that sorted out. And uh, I also had a chance to sort out the window here, got that done, along with all of the trim around the whole room is all done. And that means that this whole room is now done, except for maybe some of the minor changes that we may do in the future. Sorry, the lighting's not great in here. Uh, so that means we'll probably want to change these light bulbs. They look dope, but they don't give off a lot of light. We may just do uh, like a lamp somewhere, but uh, probably we'll have to change the bulbs. I really dig them, but they're not really giving off a bunch of light. We do have this nice big window that we're also going to change out to a black window with the, the grids and it'll probably be one single uh, awning window. This one opens up awning style, which is nice, but it would be cooler if the whole thing opened up like that. I would actually love to put in a greenhouse window. Like, I don't know what it's called exactly, but it like goes out like a triangle, kind of like a, a cellar, storm door thing. Whatever those things are called, it would be cool to put a glass one here. But I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do that um, just based off our situation and our grading and stuff. So we're gonna hold off on doing the window even though it makes most sense to do the window now because of all of what we're doing. Oh, also, this is not mold. That's just, just dirt. Should probably clean that. <laughs> In the meantime, while we figure it out, I wanted this to be deep enough to be able to put plants on here, and then that should work. I guess we got one plant, potato. Uh, decided to go with this uh, mix, two-tone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, we wanted it to be white to match the door, but we also wanted these like brown tones to match that door there, which we'll get to in a second. And so this is what we came up with. This is all reclaimed uh, old fur that came from a hundred and some year old house that was the, the door frames. And this here is actually just a piece of spruce that I had, I didn't have anything thick enough. This here is not old growth, that is new. I had to buy that, that was 90 bucks. Like what the heck, it's freaking expensive. but. I think it all works out good. Um, it's kind of a mix of an old style uh, way to do windows, but with a contemporary twist with the uh, two-tone thing going on there. I don't know, we dig it. But anyway, here we decided to do brown against the green, because I thought it would look better than say the white. It's just that kind of looks like Christmas to me, whereas this kind of just looks more classy to me. And that is also reclaimed, but it's a mix of reclaimed door frame and plywood. If you look, you can see that it's plywood, but it's subtle, so it's okay. That piece is plywood. That was actually pretty difficult to get into there. That is tight, but it's in there. <laughs> so the brown and the white, the way that we did it, I think really works together. I haven't seen this done before, so I kind of took a chance, but I like it. As for the green, we may change that at some point because we are going to be changing the uh, the floor. We're gonna be putting in real wood here. Uh, this is just laminate made out of MDF. We're having 
some minor blistering happening. It's lifting in a few places because we had some minor flooding due to this hose bib failing. So that's a bummer. This will have to be replaced at some point, but not too worried about it right now because it's barely noticeable. Although Clint, Clint did notice it. But basically it's it's somehow leaking and going down on the floor there. Oh, it is, eh? Okay. Yeah, but that's whatever. Is that what that is? Was this like that before? It looks like that's head is raised. Mm, could be. That's had some water down there. Well, that's a bummer. Okay. Yeah, I just put this in. <laughs> but now that the room is all done and tied together, it's I can't even notice it anymore. I mean, I know it's there, so I know it's there, and it was leaking at the time, so it made sense to look, but no one's going to notice. Plus, there's going to be furniture uh, covering it anyway. There's going to be a desk somewhere in here and a table and who knows what else. Plus, there's this door to distract from everything, which is also going to go through some changes at some point as well. Not the color, though. Ashley actually likes it yellow, so she was right to pick that color. But remember, it's under construction. Stay tuned for... Oh, hey, bud. <laughs> What's up, Henry? Oh, best interruption or what? <laughs> Stay tuned for another vlog where we will uh, come up with uh, something cool for that. I mean, it is already pretty cool, but it's going to be better. Oh, yeah. Speaking of doors, besides this one, we don't have any other doors in here. Here, we don't have any doors, and that's because... Oh, bud. That's literally because we just don't have any doors right now. So we... Uh, not sure exactly what we're gonna do there, but we were thinking double doors, some old school wood ones with brass knobs, which would also match this aesthetic here. Um, and then we don't have a door here either. We were thinking about doing an old school uh, three, what do you call it? Two thirds glass door that said like office and there's some sort of vintage door. But the problem is, is that it can't open this way because then it's going to block here can't open this way because then it's going to block the uh, light switch and if we are on the outside we can't have it open into this really small hallway so our only real option with what we have to work with is to have a door i guess besides maybe hanging beads that would be dumb but to have a door that slides open this way uh I've made the door bigger so that it would be easier to move in furniture and whatnot. Uh, so I've also had to move it over so that the door could open all the way without this bulkhead impeding its uh, functionality. So now our only issue is finding a door that uh, matches the aesthetic but also will function nicely without compromising the aesthetic. So for now it's just just an opening and maybe it will always be an opening. Same with this, this may always just be an opening. I'm not sure. Um, oh, you'll notice around the closet here, I've done a different profile baseboard than the rest of the room. I've never seen this before, but I'm sure other people have done it. Um, but I thought it would be cool to have this profile butt up against a flat profile. I think it looks interesting. Um, Decided to do this because it was already going to be a little different than the rest of the trim here. Uh, it was going to be a different size. Look how thick that is compared to that uh, so that it could fit under there. So everything is a little bit skinnier and I figured if it's already going to be different, may as well do something different all the way around uh, color wise and profile wise. But to make it tie in, I've done whatever those things are called on both doorways there. So it still goes. And I just think, I don't know, that just kind of has a cool look, the white going into the brown. It looks kind of cool, you know? It's, uh, I think the whole room, I really like the way that this, came out you know it's definitely unique but i don't think that it's overstated in any way 
Uh, but I'll offer this disclaimer. I I don't expect everyone to, to like what I've done here. This is definitely not to everybody's taste. Not everybody's gonna like open rafter ceilings or exposed ventilation or uh, contrasting trim and weird details like this. But I do. I like to do things a little outside the box and we like it. So I guess it's, <laughs> I guess that's why I did it like, I did it like this. I like to do things a little bit differently and if it works for the space then, then good. I forgot, I forgot that. Oh, also, I'm thinking to kind of match the lights, doing something different with the uh, face plates and receptacles and stuff. I've seen some really cool ones. So that's another potential change coming to this space, but who knows? If you keep following along with the, our vlog, then you'll see how this space evolves. But even if it doesn't change at all, I'm still perfectly happy with it. This is way better than what we were using as an office space before. It's not even close. <laughs> not even close. And I feel like now that we've done one room in the basement, why not continue on doing the rest of the basement? Or at least starting. I thought that would come down a lot easier, but probably would be safer if I cleaned up everything and disconnected the electrical. <laughs> Oh! Ho 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 ho!